Um, Miss Cooley, how do you know Miss Jackson? Um, I know Miss Jackson. She's been having an affair with my ex-husband, soon to be ex-husband. So she's been having an affair with him. Okay. Do you have any uh, relationship with her outside of that? No, never. Okay. Um, do you recall when you obtained a PPO, or did you obtain a PPO against her? I did. And do you recall when? I re it retained it October, like the 4th of October. Okay. If, if I told you the judge signed it on October 5th, does that sound right? That does. And to the best of your knowledge, was that PPO served on Ms. Jackson? Um, my friend tried to serve the PPO to her. And when she tried to serve it to her, I guess she tried to throw the PPO back to her and said she gave sent me a text message out the same day saying that um, the, uh, she received the PPO. And she, if I want to play foul, that she will um, do, I will be receiving my PPO in the mail. That's what she told me. So she was going to go get one on me. She texted so, me and told me that. She, based on your knowledge, Ms. Jackson had the PPO and was aware of it. Yes. Uh, okay. I thought she was talking to me. I apologize. All right. Uh, where are my notes? Okay. And what led you to um, apply for this PPO against Ms. Jackson? Um, she had been calling me numerous of times. She's been texting my phone. She rides past my house numerous of times. She's threatened me and my family. She told me that she had a gun and would do something to me and my family. So I felt that the need, my life was in danger. And I felt that I needed the reason to go get me a personal protection order. She even told me that she wished that I had life insurance on me and my family. Okay, and so when you were first getting these calls, how did you know that they were from Ms. Jackson? Um, like I said, my husband, I had a GPS tracker on him and I didn't know who address it was at first. This girl, is, I'm going to go back. She assaulted me in Woodland Mall and a situation happened. She fought me in Woodland Mall and she tried to press charges when she was the aggressor. So they never even pursued charges on this case. So I didn't ever know who she was. I never knew who this young girl was because she's a young girl. like, And so... I had a GPS tracker on my husband and it led me to that address and I wanted to know who it was at the time. So I left my phone number inside of the um, inside of her door when I went over there and she from that time on anytime whatever situation they had going on because I never even knew her. She's calling my phone nonstop threatening 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 him threatening me. It's just got so out of hand that I had to be aware of my surroundings when I go places. I run into this girl. She's popping off at the mouth, ready to attack me, do different things. So I fear for my life. I, I fear for my life. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you about what happened on December 31st. Do you rem remember that day? Yes, I remember that day clearly. Okay. Can, can you tell me what happened that day? Um, I, was, I, I was at home and I received a text message to my first I got three missed calls. I'm like, hello? She like, Nikki, this jazz. I'm like, what do you want calling my phone? Quit calling me. There's no reason to call me. She like, yeah, um, she she got to talking, just talking so much stuff. I called the police with her on the phone. She was like, I don't give a fuck about no, no PPO. I'll kill you and your husband. These mm. are, she was on the phone saying this stuff while I merged the police in on the phone call. So then after that, I started receiving text messages. This young lady even sent me a picture of her having sex with my husband. And what, what did those text messages say? I'll read the text message to you right now. I see why you mad now. Go suck his bitch. That bum ass who steal for a living just was at the store stealing yesterday. That's who you love. Y'all both lame as hell. He a booster stealing everything for them kids. Was just stealing that dicks yesterday. All them outfits you seen is a real dummy. What I know you don't get at all. That's why you got a son for a husband. I am done another year. Take a doormat for you. Happy New Year. That's my. I just gave him back. I was tired of him being at my house. <laughs> I had to and then what?
what, uh, what, on what date did you receive that text? I received that text December 31st. Okay. Um, it does, does Ms. Jackson have any legitimate reason to contact you? There's no reason you should contact me. I'm not your friend. I'm not nothing. I don't care okay. what he got and going on. Just, okay. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm sorry. Well, I have a chance to voice my opinion. I'm, I can still be patient. I'm just trying to wonder if I have a response or not. Yep, you're going to have a response and a chance to ask any questions that you might have for Miss Cooley. Okay, thank you. And uh, and Miss Cooley, um, have you ever contacted Miss Jackson? Um, like I said, I left my phone number inside her mailbox, and I mean in her door. And when she talked to me on the phone, certain situations because I didn't know that he was even having an affair with this girl. So when she called my phone before, but yeah, I had had a conversation with her before prior. But when it got real serious to knowing that he he was at home, then that's when the, the, all the text messages and just so like delusional stuff started coming to me. Like this is like, she needs to be in Pine Rest if you ask me. Okay. Um, and then have you contacted her directly or indirectly since no, the CPO has been placed? No, I don't contact. No, I have no contact with that girl. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Very good. Um, and Miss Jackson, do you have any questions for Miss Cooley? Um, I don't necessarily want to communicate with her. I would like to just voice my opinion when possible or voice no, my no statement. i'll give you a chance to make a statement on the record when it's your turn to present your side of the case but i got to get through miss mcnab's case first uh miss mcnab do you have any additional witnesses or evidence at this time i do not your honor thank you all right now uh we'll move to you miss jackson uh i'm going to first swear you in miss jackson if you'd raise your right hand do you <laughs> swear or affirm that your testimony today will be the truth and nothing but the truth Absolutely nothing but the truth. Very good. And uh, Ms. Jackson, um, go ahead and make your statement at this time, if you'd like. Okay, Your Honor. First, I would just like to say it is very intimidating, very scary that this woman will manipulate the courts the way that she is, especially when I have so much evidence proving my case. I have never threatened this woman as far as, you know, with a gun or her family or anything, you know what I mean? There's nothing that her family has done to me that would make me feel that I would have to get revenge or anything on her. Honestly, this situation is just a manipulation. You know, I did send you a letter with a lot of em ev evidence, excuse me, I'm not sure if you received it yet. I'm ready to show the evidence. Um, originally, I was, I placed the PPO order on her. Adrian Cooley, this was back in, um, June, I'm sorry, May 15th, 2023, Monique came to my home on Sunday, May 14th, 2023. I have evidence pictures to verify she was there. She caused a huge disturbance. Me and Mr. Cooley were asleep at my home. She came to my home distressed in, in boxers, in, in men boxers, in house shoes, and a t-shirt with no bra. I have evidence, again, to prove what I'm, my story. Um, she came to my home. She banged on my door. What, what date are you saying that occurred on, uh, Miss Jackson? This, about? Is, this occurred on May 14, 2023. There was a police report that was made as well for the disturbance. She came to my home. She was very aggressive. My neighbor next door had to step in to pretty much, you know, stop everything from escalating. The police were called because she entered my home, and the police report is said that she entered my home, but she exited before you know the police arrived your honor i have this woman really trying to terrorize my life because mr cooley she cannot control the actions of mr cooley he's a grown man i understand there had been an affair going on but at the end of the day you know what i mean i'm not the only one who's under overstepped boundaries and i've always been single i've never been married so this has not been my issue the only reason why this woman is continuing to try to pursue charges against me is because she is very upset about the situation I have just had another police report that was filed on Sunday. I can give you the number. It's too early for me to give you the report, but I can give you the case number. This woman came to my home while she had the PPO on me, and she pretty much called the police to my home because she thought Mr. Cooley was here. There were three police officers that came to my home. I had it came outside to talk to them. They explained the situation. I have a live recording of the police officer telling me she told Miss Cooley 
it does not look good for you to be on her premises when you have a PPO on her. Also, Your Honor, I just placed another police report for last Friday. Monique Cooley, her daughter, she has two daughters. I don't know their last name. In the, I have all type of verification. I've been, you know, this is an open investigation. She drove these two young ladies over to my home to steal my surveillance camera on Friday because she felt like I would not be able to prove my evidence. I have a witness who, you know, they saw her, they heard her voice. She did not get out of the car. But my neighbor, because she is familiar with Miss Cooley after everything that's occurred at my residence, she's told me that Miss Cooley drove these two young ladies over. They they actually stole my surveillance camera. I have a open investigation going on. So what this woman is trying to do here is she is trying to assassinate my character because she does not like me based upon the situation, which I understand. I have never threatened her. I have never come to her home. She cannot provide any surveillance footage of me being at her home. I'm going to show you footage of her being at my home on multiple occasions. And it's to the point I'm afraid for my life. My son cannot play outside because this woman comes to my home on a regular basis. And for her to pretty much come to my home while she has a PPO on me, it's just to the point where I feel like I can't do anything. You know, I feel defeated here, Your Honor. It is just not fair to me. The circumstances, I'm a college student, I'm also pursuing a small business. I have a child that I'm trying to take care of. I do not disturb this woman. I am not a violent person. I do not do any of these things. So if I can show you my proof that this woman has been harassing me and that she is the harasser, oh. I, ha I can get to that right now. Well, we're not gonna, because that would go more towards either uh, taking away the PPO or second, uh, that would support a PPO. We have this footage of her at my house right here, sir. This is one picture of her at my oh, house. So, uh, Your Honor, I would object to any surveillance footage as I have not been provided it and have not had a chance to review it. This is another, yeah. another yeah, footage of her. You know, Ms. Jackson, at this time, uh, what, uh, because the, you know, the issue is the question of whether or not you violated the one that's in favor of her. I'll hear your testimony that she is provoking this by um, showing up or uh, trying to intimidate you on the other side, but I don't need to see the uh, surveillance just testifying all way it. I understand, Your Honor. I was never served a PPO. The woman that she claimed served me a PPO wrote on the court papers that she served me a PPO by Coach Lane, but my surveillance camera shows this woman at my house when I was not there, so I just feel like if she actually did come to my house, why would you lie? Because Miss Cooley drove her to my home. I caught them when I was leaving, when I was on my way home. I seen her parked on my premises, so she went out of her way to try to drive this woman to my home to serve me a PPO when that's a violation itself, you know? This woman is clearly playing games and it's just it's just very unfortunate. Okay, all right. I think I have an understanding of where you're coming from. Uh, Ms. McNabb, do you have any questions uh, for Ms. Jackson? Uh, yes, um, Ms. Jackson, um, did you send Ms. Cooley any text messages on uh, December 31st? Your Honor, I, I'm sorry. No, I did not. I'm not sure what type of game she's playing, how she got these text messages or so. I have a phone number that I can't verify the, the, the text message that was sent. But anytime I text her, ma'am, it was just at the time when me and Mr. Cooley were going through our differences. And since she was harassing me so much, I was reaching out, telling her like, hey, can you please get your husband? He's back over here. I don't want you to be coming to my home. So I was contacting her. But I guess she was already in the process of being done with him. So everything that I was doing was agitating her. I've never caught her phone harassing her. I don't own a gun. I've never, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why she would lie in court like this. This is really insane to me. Okay, so the text message that Miss Cooley um, uh, read out loud. You're saying that you didn't send that. That is absolutely false, ma'am. I've never talked like that before. Me and her have had arguments, but I have never texted her those words, and I don't know how. She can prove that that's me, but I can assure you, right hand to God, that I have not texted her those things. Oh, and have you have you texted her or called her at all since the PPO was in place? I was not aware when the PPO was in place because again, it was never served. But when I did speak to her at whenever time, she did inform me like, you know, you're not supposed to be calling me. I have a PPO, and I'm like, okay, you know, I'll I'll, I'll leave her alone. I just wanted to let you know that he has been back over here, and I don't want you to come disturbing me. So. I, I'm letting you know, just as communicating, you know, I've been harassed. So this is very, this is very disappointing to be going through this situation. 
Okay. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Okay. And uh, I, I do not have any uh, follow-up yeah. questions either. Uh, so thank you. Uh, unless, Ms. Jackson, there's additional testimony you'd like to give at this time. I do not. Okay. Then you may step down from the witness stand. Um, any um, additional witnesses or evidence you'd like to present, Ms. Jackson? Um. And I did not receive your letter yet or the attached uh, evidence, so I haven't reviewed that um, in connection with the, today's hearing. It sounds like most of that goes towards it might support a protective order on your behalf. Um, it was again, denied. I, I actually tried, and for some reason they denied it, and I'm going to try again. Well, and sometimes with a protective order, I can tell you uh, it's as straightforward as Michigan law does not allow what we call reciprocal protective orders and that I can't say, well, one on you and one on her, um, that, uh, you know, you have to have a separate basis for it. But if you send in the evidence, then I'll consider that uh, like I consider all of the submissions. Well, that farewell. Uh, we'll do. We'll do because I have to be safe as well, sir. All right. Uh, then I think we're to the time for uh, a closing statement. A closing statement, Miss McDonald. I was never near her home. There's Sunday. a police report with it in it. I'm talking, ma'am. I'm talking, ma ma'am. Let, let ma There's a police report, so before you lie, just be honest. I'm ta I'm talking, ma'am. Okay. Yep. You'll get a so, chance to ask her questions again. Did you it. recently go anywhere near her home? So I told you Monday. I went <laughs> over to her home. Went over to Wingate Apartments. Never did I go to her home. I called the authorities on my ex-husband. And that's when the police, I called the police and went towards that way with the police. It was my premises. Against my husband. And she had <laughs> nothing to do with nothing. It was my premises. My premises. He was here. Nobody was ever near your premises. Okay. okay. Hang on, Ms. Your Jackson, premises. I'll give you a chance to ask questions. I'm sorry, sir. She said it's he wasn't lying there. And it's not fair. We're on court. How are you lying? This girl is the court. Court. Hang, hang on. We can only have one person talk crazy. at a time. Okay, uh, sir. You're right, Your I'll, Honor. Yep. I'll have you hold off, Ms. Jackson, but I'll give you a chance to ask questions after Ms. McNabb is finished with her questions. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. McNabb. And Ms. Cooley, why did you call the police? I called the police because my ex-husband took some expensive belongings from my home. I was taking my niece to Wingate Apartments to apply for an application. And when I got towards that way, I synced his car there. So I called the police while I was at Wingate Apartments. And the police came towards that direction. They knocked on because my door. I'm not talking to you. They knocked okay. on my door, Yana. So you were not there to have any. You were not there with no, anything I having never to do with Ms. Jackson. To, no, I never went to her premises, ma'am. This girl okay. is making up a whole delusional story. The police report will verify this is pretty scary. You want to lie like this, girl? Hang shut on. The, hey. I'm going to give you a chance, Miss Jackson. It's just it's crazy, you know. It's crazy, Your Honor. Jackson, you know? I'm going to need to mute you though uh, if you keep it kind of cutting into the testimony because it. Uh, all this gets recorded and it becomes part of the record in case either side wants to appeal my decision at the end. Uh, so I only can have one person talk at a time. Fair enough. I apologize. Okay. You uh, may continue, Ms. McNabb. And Ms. Cooley, um, how, how do you know that Ms. Jackson is the one who sent you those text messages? She called me from the number 50 times. Okay. She and called me from the number and not only that, she texted me the stuff. I had her on the phone with the police. I merged her in with the police talking on the phone. Okay. And and you recognized her voice? I know her voice, yes. Okay. She's called me a million times. She's delusional. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Okay. And Miss Jackson, do you have any questions that you would like to ask Miss Cooley at this time? Your Honor, I just want to say Miss Cooley did not actually come to my door, but she was in my parking lot. I have a parking lot and the police did not allow me to pretty much even leave my home. She was on my premises. Lying. And I have a video of the officer who she, you know, spoke with and the officer just pretty much confirmed. She said, I did inform Miss Cooley that it doesn't look good for her to be at your house on your premises when she has a PPO on you. Those were her exact words. And I can very verify that. I can verify that. Okay, any other questions, uh, Ms. Jackson? Nope. All right, any further, Ms. McNabb? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, then thank you, Ms. Cooley. You may step down from the witness stand. Um, okay. uh, any rebuttal or additional witnesses at this time, Ms. Jackson? 
Ms. Jackson, any additional witnesses? Um, I don't have any present as, as now. I didn't know if I would need them right now, but I do have relatives. I have family who was very familiar with this situation. So, you know, if that's a future thing, I will have them. But as of now, no. Okay. All right. Well, then I think we're to the time for the closing statement, uh, Ms. McNamp. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Cooley has testified that she received several calls from Ms. Jackson on December 31st. Um, she has testified that she recognized her voice on the other end because she had heard her voice over the phone many times. And she has testified that she received that threatening text message from the same number that called her. She was um, just at my house March oh. 8th. She was just at my house March 8th with clothes. I have yep. her on camera with her face. That's not me. If that doesn't show my face, on, it shows it, yours. Ms. McNabb uh, is, is speaking now. Let's let Ms. McNabb make her closing statement. And then you're going to be able to make one, Ms. Jackson, and then we'll be finished. And Ms. Cooley has also testified that this has been ongoing and continuous harassment. Um, I believe the court should find her her testimony as credible um, and find that Ms. Jackson has at the very least violated the PPO once, if not more than once. Um, Ms. Cooley has explained why she was in the vicinity of Ms. Jackson's home uh, on Monday that had nothing to do with Ms. Jackson, um, that she was doing something for her niece and there was a dispute between her and her husband. Um, so the court should not take that into consideration. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Jackson. Uh, you're muted, Ms. Jackson. You'll have to unmute or I'll have to unmute you. There we go. Okay, Your Honor, I just last would like to say, you know, it is not a thing on her ex-husband or soon-to-be ex-husband. If the police come to my home and actually knock on my door, there were three police officers she sent to my home because she's seen his vehicle at my house. If you ask me, that is a form of harassment. If you're driving past and you have a PPO on me and I haven't violated by contacting you and you just notice your husband's car and you sent him to my home and you're parked on the corner of my house speaking with the police about the situation, it's harassment, it's manipulation. And I just feel like, how can I possibly live my life in peace with this woman antagonizing me on a regular basis, Your Honor? I will, I have no problem minding my business. I. I'm not confrontational. I don't have enemies. This woman has done so much to me. But like I said, I am in school. I don't have time to just sit here and document every little thing until it came down to this right here. I had the police report verifying that she was not at Wingate, that she was on my premises. If I'll be able to provide that, you'll be able to see that I'm not making the situation up there. There was just this was just a manipulation, you know, because she was upset about him being at my home. Okay. All right. Well, I have heard the um, the testimony today. Uh, there haven't been any um, documents that were um, introduced into evidence on this matter. And the question is, is can I determine beyond a reasonable doubt that um, text messages uh, sent on December 31st of last year, that is 2023, uh, were from uh, respondent Ms. Jackson and second uh that uh they uh those messages violate the the personal protective um order at this time and uh uh miss miss jackson has denied that those were from her however um the testimony from miss cooley has been while well, i recognized her voice um on the on the phone uh and thus i knew it was her uh calling me um In addition, there were an allegation that there were some um, text messages uh, here uh, uh, following the uh, uh, the calls, uh, including uh, 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 one that uh, Miss uh, Cooley has testified to. Uh, you know, uh, uh, was in sexual nature involving her soon-to-be ex-husband. Uh, Mr. Cooley, I will note that Mr. Cooley is at the midst of this dispute, and of course is not here today uh, testifying in either uh, things. You know, it, it, it strikes me that uh, sometimes uh, in these cases, a uh, man is the root of the trouble, and uh, the man somehow Cooley and her soon-to-be ex-husband, and uh, you know, he seems to be kind of drifting maybe between two different locations, maybe more uh, where he is staying, uh, and certainly be, seems to be playing a role in this. And 
uh, acknowledging that, uh, you know, and I, there's no way that a protective order uh, orders the two of you to be friends or to have a good communicating relationship with each other. I don't expect that to happen. However, I do expect both of you to kind of, you know, I, I say it's um, like the referee in a boxing ring where he, you know, says to the, the two uh, boxers, you know, each of you go into your own corner, uh, neutral corner and stay there. Uh, don't uh, recommence uh, the fight until, well, don't recommence the fight. How about that? Uh, but definitely not while the protective order is in place, because while it's in place, uh, at least with regard to you, Miss Jackson, you are correct in your assessment that it isn't fair. You're the reset. You know, you're the respondent. Uh, you've got everything to lose, uh, whereas you'd have to convince me um you know on the flip side that uh, miss cooley was more to blame than you were uh if an incident did happen your safest course of action uh to protect your studies and um, your life that you're building uh entirely separate it appears to be uh, from miss cooley is just uh you know stay uh, out of sight and out of contact uh, with her and even if you get angry uh at mr cooley i don't know if he's still involved but uh do not use uh, miss cooley as a way to to reach him, uh, you got to figure out a way to uh, get to him directly if that's still an issue between the two of you. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I don't have to decide that today, but don't use her as the go between because of the uh, existence of this protective order. So uh, I'll send you a letter. It'll give you a couple Saturday mornings when you can go down to that sheriff's department. I say to people when they do that, uh, take a look. You know, you're only going down there for a visit, you're not going to jail. There's nothing. Uh, you know, criminal about it. This is a civil case. You're just giving your fingerprints. However, um, if I do find you in violation in order to go to jail after a hearing, uh, that's where you'll wind up and it'll be uh, for several nights, uh, you know, as uh, punishment for violating the court's order. Uh, I'm not doing that at this time. Uh, most people uh, take the warning the first time and say, you know what, I don't want to spend any more time than I have to uh, mm -hmm. here at the Kent County Jail or with the Kent County Sheriff's Department and uh, don't don't have any problems but the order does remain in place and i will uh, uh caution both parties to continue to uh observe uh the order and as i said it is a uh, a shield and not a sword so uh that is the conclusion of today's hearing uh i will thank both parties for appearing uh, by video today arguing your case and also participating in this uh i haven't seen as i said your evidence but i will review it if it comes in miss jackson and if you've applied for a protective order i do consider each one of those as they come in individually if you can support one uh, you may be able to uh, qualify as well but in any case what what the uh, court process indicates to me is that you're both willing to go through this legal process even though it's slow and uh, not always very satisfying as a way to, uh, uh, you know, defend your, uh, you protect your rights and protect yourself uh, rather than taking it in person or via, you know, each other's families uh, to each other, things like that. That's exactly what protective orders are designed to do is to get people into court and not, uh, you know, come into blows with each other in the street. So uh, you're both respecting that process and I'm grateful for that. Uh, I will send out the follow-up orders, and with that, we're concluded. What it do, everyday people, man? It's your boy PJ. Today, we back with another lit video. We back in the confessional, and yes, we stay in lit, big dog, man. Shout out to my everyday people who rock with me every day. Shout out to my homeboy, Lucky Wheels and Deals, man. He keeps it lit. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section, okay? about this situation okay hit the links down in the description we got the hivemindlabs.com we got the opulent sense candles and we got custom underscore freaks at on instagram okay where you can get you a custom made tumbler to your liking and y'all hit them up okay all right man let's get into it man so you got uh monique cooley and jasmine jackson out of grand rapids michigan okay this stuff is getting spicy now Jasmine is being accused of running up on Miss Monique Cooley and giving her them hands, okay? She gave her them hands all over a man. Now, they didn't get too much into the uh, the the fight dispute, but I, I'm assuming uh, Jasmine put the beat the brakes off of Monique, okay? Monique was over there trying to look for her man, her husband, and, you know, ran into some hands like she ran into her fist her face ran into her fist um 
It's crazy that Miss Jackson is asking, how can I be at peace when you uh, over here sleeping with somebody else's husband? Okay, if you want peace, don't mess with the uh, man. Don't mess with a married man. Okay, Miss Cooley, you are actually going after the wrong person. Of course, I know I understand that your man was at her house, but if you got a PPO up against her. And your man is over there, that means you need to stay away. That's a good sign for you to stay away. Matter of fact, since that's your soon-to-be ex-husband, soon-to-be, leave him alone. Okay? Get over that situation. I know it's not hard, not easy to get over situations like that. But at this point, uh, you are endangering yourself, your children, according to Miss Jackson. You're endangering your children by going to people's houses and stealing cameras from you you know it, it's going too far. Um, I don't know what to say about uh, the women who um, go after the other woman, which uh, it happens a lot. Uh, there's a lot of pain in that uh, in emotion in that. So um, I get it. Uh, but at the end of the day, if that man don't want to be had, he, he you know. He probably got another woman at that. Like he, you know, he got a girl in high school, which I don't know how in the high school, college. I don't know how young she is, but if she's still in college, let's assume that she's young, maybe in her 20s, early 20s. Okay. She seems to have a good head on her shoulders, Miss Jackson does. Well, Miss Cooley, who is probably in her 30s, um, married and. Uh, wants to protect what's hers. Now, she's probably been with him over some years. Hopefully, there isn't any kids involved, but that that would seem to be what is true is there some kids involved. Um, she's actually being immature about this whole situation. You got your kids out there involved, kids in the background talking noise. She lying, she lying, like, you know, um... This chick is crazy. Um, and she's being petty. I think both of them are lying. I think Miss Cooley did go over there, did go to her house. She did not go to take her niece over there to get no apartment. Because first of all, I don't know how big Grand Rapids, Michigan is, but I'm assuming this couldn't be this big where you got to take her to an apartment that this chick lives in to help her find an apartment. What is it? A low, low income apartments. And there's only a few of them in, you know, Grand Rapids. I, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how big Grand Rapids is, but they got a mall in Kentwood, you know, close enough. I don't know. Um, the Woodland mall. Um, and now, if, if she has to take her over there to the apartments, I think that that's a lie. Her and her niece was going to pull up on this woman to see where her husband was. And then, Miss Jackson said he wasn't there. But then later on in her testimony, she was like, he was there. If y'all go back and see, she was like, um, she was coming to see her husband who was at my house. Okay, well, you said he wasn't there, but he was. Okay, now Miss Jackson has to go get fingerprinted and stuff because the judge did find her to be in violation of this PPO or if not violation, but to enforce the PPO. Okay, um, but Miss Jackson wants to turn around and get a PPO against her, which they would in turn have to drop the first PPO in order to add the the latter, you know what I'm saying, and uh, they say it's co it's not a common, but it could happen. But either way, they need to just go to their separate corners, okay? Like the judge said, um, this, this is a crazy situation, man. Everyday people, let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm gonna let you later. Peace. <laughs>
we getting lit today. Cause we got a package from Opulent Sense. There you go, Opulent Sense. Yes, we got us a care package. We got us a total of three candles and we got some foam and bath wash. Now, I'm gonna try this out tonight, okay? Um, Cause over here at the Everyday People, ain't nothing sweet but the Chardonnay, okay? But we're gonna take this foam and bath wash. We're gonna be sweet today. I wonder what I could use that on. Anyway, so we got the foam and body soap. And this is, I believe it's a Burberry flavor. Mm. Too bad I got allergies. But I, it's strong enough you can smell it through your allergies. That's crazy. Okay. Also, I have a uh, candle. It says, pass me not. Oh, gentle say behavior. Hit the cash app. Cash app everyday PJ, okay? Also, this is the Burberry scent. Now, this do, this does have specific directions. And what we're going to do is we're going to trim the wick to one fourth inch, approximately six millimeters before lighting. Keep candle free of any foreign materials, including matches and wick trimmings. Burn only the candle on a level. Fire resistant surface. Do not burn the candle for more than four hours at a time. Okay. So we're gonna take the pass me not. She 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 named this specific scent after the communion. If you watch my lives, you know we do communion, and our song is Pass Me Not, uh, O Gentle Savior. Okay, and we do that so you can don't pass me up and hit that cash app. Okay, so I'm gonna trim this wick. I got my blick, flick your bick. Oh, pass me not, oh gentle savior. Hit the cash app here. My humble cry while on others thou art called all in. Do not pass me by. Hit the cash app. Make sure y'all hit the links down below in the description. We got opulent scents where you can get your three wick candle or the single wick candle and you can get your foam and or phone body bath scrubber stuff. Anyway, keep your lid big dog. Peace.